Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, obviously, I'm here to announce my retirement from, from AFL. I can't help on the field this year, but this might be my gift in helping the club um, off-field and maybe realising someone else's dream that they can come in and, and play. You guys are an incredible team. Incredible. I haven't seen anything like it. Finals have been the same ever since I can remember. Hard, tough, Richmond-style footy gets the job done. And you're going to dedicate this game not to yourself, but to someone else. Because if you do it for someone else, you work harder than you've ever worked before. You're going to do a great job. Enjoy it as much as you can. Let's get the job done. Growing up, it's all about having fun. When I met Marlon, I was 15. He was 16 at the time. Connected really well. Yeah. I think I tried to grow up a bit quicker than I should have. He enjoyed um, going out into the city, um, hanging with his friends and getting up to mischief. I enjoyed my life to the fullest. Giving life to the fullest landed us in prison. A few days after Marlon got taken to prison, I found I was pregnant for uh, Latrell, our second child, and I thought that was bad, just having one by myself for two and a half years, but then raising two, uh, I knew it was going to be hard. Yeah, it's probably one of the hardest times of my life, just leaving my kids and my partner. My older brother was in there, and me and him ended up going into the same cell together. Thomas basically said, oh, what are you doing here? You can't be there when your partner needs help with the kids. Send up their first birthday, first Christmas. Yeah, I missed out. Gave him you know, good talking to once he got locked up. I will just try and get drum that into his head to keep out of that trouble and keep out of that lifestyle. You know, he's got his two boys to look after his little family. No, he's got a lot of catching up to do. He could be an AFL player if he really wanted to. I mean, that's just his choice he's got to make. Well, it's probably the, the biggest priority in you know, our culture, spending time and quality time with family. So I think the one thing I learned straight away with Marlon, that his, his number one priority was his family. You know, he had to change something in his life. Sometimes when you think you've been buried, you've actually been planted. As funny as it is, jail might have been the best thing that actually happened to Marlon. It might have saved him going down an even worse road. Hopefully I make it to AFL. It's mainly my dream since I was a kid. And hopefully it comes through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a perfect afternoon. The sun is shining. Marlon Pickett, what about that story? First man to debut in a grand final for 67 years. The 27-year-old from Perth. Henry, just play. Yeah. Obviously jumped at the chance to, to present to, to Marlon and it's all about overcoming adversity, I think. His life has been that. You know, I can't wait to see Marlon play, so good luck, brother. The opening siren, it's Richmond and the Giants in the 2019 Grand Final. Edwards, toe pokes at four, Bolton attacked at Brittany. Handball to the advantage, here's Pickett, that was a beautiful move. Kicks to the pocket, Lynch in a good spot, couldn't quite hang on. Here he is, Pickett, really starting to come into the game a little bit now. Kick was a little bit sloppy, the centre half forward out the back door. Rioli, there's time, four, three, two, one, it's a goal! Right on the siren, he's got it! Marlon came down to the South Randall Football Club a few days after he would got out of prison. So from 2013 to, to midway through 2019, he really developed as a person and uh, became not just a good player, but a very good leader and role model for all people around our football club. And at the end of 2018, he was very disappointed. And felt like quitting footy after missing out on the last two years of the draft. I was thinking, oh, I'm getting too old. Is it gonna happen? Are they really judging me on my past, not really on my talent? So he came to me quite early in the 2019 season and said, look, I really want to get serious about this. 
The AFL introduced a mid-year draft, which obviously was the first of its kind for, for a number of years, and we just opened up a list spot with, with Sean Grigg retiring. I was able to ring some people that I knew, at clubs that I knew had spoken to Marlon and uh, asked them what was it about Marlon that was stopping them picking him up. Well, this is a kid that's playing waffle footy, checkered pass, 27 years of age. So the chance of him, I thought, of making it to the AFL environment were, was slim. The fact of the matter is he did have a, a broken finger that he was recovering from that had proven a little bit difficult to, to get an assessment of because he hadn't played much. And yeah, at that time I was thinking, ah, oh, draft hopes are gone. Matt Clark has joined us. What have you gone for at pick 13 for the Tigers? Yeah, we've selected Marlon Pickett from the South Fremantle Football Club. I'm so glad that an injury awesome. hasn't yeah. ruined things for him. Yeah, my name went caught up. He was more shocked than anything. Uh, Jess ran out the front door, left me, sitting there scratching my head. Yeah, I think she was more excited than I was. Yeah, I ran outside and come back in, he was still standing in the same position. It was a great courage, I think, by our footy staff. It would have been easy to say, you know what, well, he's broken finger, let's just pick another kid and give them a go. But our guys were that bullish on him, the fact that they thought he could help us not only this year but years to come, that is worth an opportunity. I know there's a couple of clubs that are kicking themselves because they've told me they wish they had had the fortitude to pick Marlon Pickett up in their mid-season draft or sometime over the six previous drafts that, uh, that, that came before. Tigers by seven, going to the punt road end in their second term. Gets it off to Marlon Pickett, getting a heap of it inside, 50 bender, out the back, Dusty, all sorts of trouble here, the pick up's clean, and the snap is good. Dusty's dangerous, there are alarm bells going off everywhere at the moment, Pickett's having an influence in his first game of footy. Jess and Marlon may have only been over maybe about three, possibly four weeks at that stage, Marlon wasn't playing. My best mate's brother passed away. So I went back for his funeral. While we are in Perth, um, Jess's brother passed away as well. Sam is like, uh, he's a year older than me. And um, when I was younger, I was like a real tomboy. Wanted to do what he done and, um, yeah, very close. One of the hardest moments I had was watching your partner go through so much pain and you can't really do anything. Yeah, he was a character. Yeah. Very happy person. Oh, her and her brother was really close. So yeah, I know how hard she, she was hurting. I was probably a little bit honest with myself. I thought it might be the last time I'd, I've heard of Marlon Pickett. He might be staying in Perth for them to come back after the significance of, of lost member of family. It was incredible, really, and a testament to the not only the character of, of them overall, but the, the belief they had in Marlon as a player. So two quarters ahead in season 2019. Richmond take a 35-point lead into the third term. This man is playing a great game. Pickett composed, sets up Martin. I kid with Dusty. Looked like he was going to have a shot. Then I seen him look my way, so I started walking into space. Guess who? <laughs> Gave it to the man that set it up for him. Really selfless by him to give a first game a, a shot and goal. This will be one of the great balls in grand final history. Marlon Pickett lines up. Thinking there was for Jess's brother. He said he was going to come over here for my first game. Yeah, he would have been watching. Yeah, definitely. Jess was very supportive of him and suggested that the best thing for him was to come back to Melbourne. That's what he did. He came back home and he trained. He got back in there. I think he played uh, five or six VFL games. Yeah, the VFL grand final did change a lot of things. We're watching the game and Marlon just keeps showing up. He just was a match winner at stages as well. Like when you needed a big play or something special to happen, Marlon was often in that, and then he wins the, you know, the best home ground for the VFL Grand Final. I remember getting a phone call from Dimmer after the game, just saying, 
can you just have a quick chat to Marlon just to tell him to look after himself over the next couple of days because he, you know, he might be in the mix. Do you think Marlon Pickett could play in six days' time in an AFL grand final? Probably his biggest advocate. I was um, pushing him pretty hard. I'm talking to Trent, I'm talking to Jack Rewild, I remember talking to Shane Edwards, talking to the coaches, trying to get them to tell me why he shouldn't play. And everyone just kept thinking he should play. Um, I was doing meditation. Then when the coaches called me outside, I'm like, we speak outside. Yeah, I walked into the coach's room and Dimma said, um, you're in our best 24. I said, that's all right. I wasn't expecting to play anyway. But then he said, you're in our best 22. Then I started getting nervous a bit. Then I come back in here, done meditation, finish it off. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting him to break down in tears or do cartwheels or anything like that. And he just gave us a simple, oh, that's great, thanks very much, and walked back into his meditation meeting, which was... Uh, Quite astounding, actually. I don't think I'll see anything ever like it again. Then I remember driving on the way home thinking, I hope this goes all right, because otherwise it could look like a real, real bad decision. This would be just about the greatest feeling of all as a player. You're 62 points up and you've got one quarter of footy to go. Marlon Pickett, got to be a chance for the Norm Smith medal. Martin able to pick it up, turns around the corner and does the just nails it. I think we're going to win it. <laughs> the coach is down on the boundary. Big hug for the debutant. Took the risk. Paid off beautifully. The Tigers are premiers for the 12th time in their history. Football's one thing, but I don't think he's defined by his football prowess. He's defined by the man he's become. The great father, the great partner, the great brother and son and friend to all of us. I think if he looks back in probably another 10 years' time, it probably wouldn't change too much because he's learnt those life lessons, certainly can pass that on to his young family now and give them a life that potentially that he may have missed out on. He made a wish come true. Started from the bottom, like rock bottom. Now I'm here, so if you're willing to change and follow your dreams and chase them, then Anything happen. Big message we can take from a story such as Marlon is, first and foremost, the belief that he had himself, but also the, the hope that gives others that their dream is still alive as well. Our game does some great things. There's more Marlins out there, we've just got to find them.